about body awareness, and I really wanted to touch upon that, but I didn't get a chance to. But um, yeah, I really think that just being more aware of my body and a lot of semantics help with that. Like if you do Alexander Technique, um, Falden Cross, uh, Rolfing, any of those type of things, they, they really help center yourself um, into this place of mindfulness. Um, if you watch The Mindful Pianist, which is a, a piano player that has focal dystonia, she does a lot of great videos online, and we've talked a lot about her in, in past interviews, and um, it, if, if I'm in the state of mindfulness and I'm aware of my body, I'm aware of what's happening, um, more and just observing it and not reacting to everything that's going on, I can, I'm much more understanding of my dystonia. And it's like Alex said, he's gotten to the point where he can, you know, tell when there's going to, exactly how it's going to react. Not only exactly how it's going to react, he's going to, he knows how it's going to react before it even reacts, before it reacts and reacts. <laughs> like he knows it down to the last detail. And it's the same way. It's like he becomes so aware of your symptoms that you, you know what, areas like I know what areas in my face are worse than others I know what muscles tend to flare up in a certain register I know certain even specific pitches where I know it's gonna like affect this side more than this side or I'm gonna feel a, a twitch here or a twitch here or if I'm gonna feel a twitch here or if I know that my lower lips gonna protrude I know exactly what register what notes on um, that kind of thing so um, anyways long story short the myofascial stretches I do it on both sides and I just go work my way back and then after I'm done doing that I really make sure that I ice pack or heat pack um, just because uh, a lot of that stretching, it breaks up a lot of the fluid in the face because I know if you're playing at that time, there's a lot of, um, uh, sometimes there can be swelling. So you just want to be careful and make sure that you ice and heat pack if you feel too sore afterwards. Um, even better for me was doing castor oil pulls, which isn't something that I started doing until actually last year. Um, and it's one of those weird, you know, old maiden things where you like you know my great grandma did this um use castor oil for everything um and so basically a castor oil pull is where I put castor oil in my mouth and I swish it around like mouthwash and then I spit it out in the garbage and um castor oil is known to help with uh inflammation and with um relaxing the muscles and making them feel refreshed and that has helped me a lot as well I know that sounds strange but it I do that for 30 minutes um maybe two or three times a week and it really helps the, you know, the the muscle tension go away. And I don't know how to describe how. It just, it's like almost like I soaked my muscles in oil and they feel so much better. But, um, uh, yeah. So I hope that explains everything. Um, if you have any questions, I have tons of other stretches that I do too. Um, in the beginning, I had to do a lot of stretches. Like I did um, facial stretches. I do tongue stretches. I even massage my tongue. Um, I do neck stretches. I do um, uh, upper back and shoulder stretches, um, and I even um, had chiropractic work done on my neck. Um, so anything to help just alleviate all this tension helps. So, all right, I hope to hear from you soon again, and I hope this helps. Thank you. Bye.